Howdy Space Engineers! I'm Whiplash141, and today I will be showcasing my Peregrine Dive Bomber. This craft is capable of delivering four guided bombs to its target. So this right here is the Peregrine. Um, you can see that on the back she has a Gatling turret, and that's because I wanted it to be a lot like the old World War II dive bombers. Um, you can see right here we have a lot of upwards thrust and right under the nose we have a air vent set to depressurize so that we don't suffocate in atmosphere. So now that we're inside the ship we can see to the right we have displayed our position, our velocity, and our acceleration. And on the left we have our status of our bombs and our pitch angle. Now when I pitch too high um, you'll see that a warning pops up that says that I cannot release my bombs. Now if I decrease my angle so that I'm pointing below the horizon line you'll see that that uh, error disappears. Currently my nose is pointed above the horizon line and I'm attempting to launch the bombs but as you can see there's a safety mechanism built in that will not allow me to release them unless my pitch angle is below the horizon. Now the reason for this is because the bombs themselves have no propulsion of their own and they use gravity to accelerate themselves and you have to be pitched down to be able to go forward. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a little demonstration of how the drop sequence works. Um, I've lined myself up with that target way over there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my nose away from that target right after I initialize the drop sequence. So here we go. And you'll see that the missile, or the bomb, pardon me, is curving towards the target. The bomb is not really affected by any motion that you make with your ship after the launch sequence has been initiated. Now this is really good being a dive bomber because you don't want to stay in the area of operation for too long because your, uh, your new friends that you make with these bombs are not going to be too happy. Now as exciting as watching this thing fall is, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the good bits. All right, we are now on final approach. Let's see what happens. As you can see, we kind of got a bit of a lag spike right there, but uh, the bomb still hit dead center, so I'm pretty happy. For this next test, I'm going to hit these four targets that are situated around four kilometers away from me. Right now, I'm zooming in on them, and each little click you hear is me dropping one missile one bomb pardon me there goes bomb number two here goes bomb number three and number four all right so all are away let's go ahead and follow them Okay, our bombs are nearing the target. Let's see what they do. Number one is a hit, dang near a bullseye. Number two, right on the money. Number three, laying on the pain. Four for four, there we go, four bullseyes. I'd, I'd say that's a pretty darn successful test. I love how they crash after the fact. And for my next magic trick, no, I'm just kidding. Um, next, we'll be attacking a enemy target, turreted enemy target, um, in a shallow dive. Now that we're lined up, I'm going to go ahead and accelerate towards our target. You can see our speed is increasing. Um, and now we're locking in our positions, dropping each bomb one by one. Each time you see the camera jump, it's because the uh, bombs don't separate perfectly clean, which makes the, uh, the guidance that they have on board them all the more necessary. Bombs have been dispatched, and now I am pulling up. And let's watch them come into the target. That's uh, quite a scratch we left, huh? 
And it seems I forgot to turn uh, station voxel support on, which means that these little parts will just magically float in the air. But uh, if I had that on, then they would behave more realistically and actually fall off. But all in all, this test seemed pretty successful. I'm quite pleased. Now let's try and hit something with a few more guns. Around 6 kilometers away from me is the Space Pirate Headquarters, bristling with Gatling guns. And we are going to attempt to send them a little gift. For this particular engagement, I'm going to be attacking at a quite shallow angle, uh, similar to how World War II torpedo planes would come in and drop their payloads. So I'm going to go ahead and accelerate up to full speed. Here we go. Pick my targets, drop the bombs, and get the heck out of there before they receive my package. Part of my footage was messed up for this next part, the approach, but I managed to salvage what I could. We have the final approach right here. Typically the automated turrets will focus on just one of these bombs, so if you fire multiple at a target, chances are you're going to hit it. See that one was completely deflected by the turret fire, but we managed to score one hit on the reactor core and one here off to the side. So not perfect, but um, typically you won't be engaging targets with this kind of armament. A better way to attack a very heavily fortified position is to attack it from above and dive on it with a really steep angle. You can see here that we are very close to being vertically above this pirate base. The reason for this is that it's very hard to deflect an object to the side when it's falling directly on top of you and you're directly underneath it. So we're going to select the center, one of these outlying platforms. Select the center again. Let's try and hit the uh, the conning tower. And let's hit this building again. Bombs have been dropped, so now's a good time to make ourselves scarce. We can just about see these bombs coming into play. Here they are. And they're being met by fire. One of them's tumbling like crazy. Let's see what we hit. Oh, we had two hits, three hits, and it looked like the fourth hit this tower and phased. It's a very frustrating bug that's occurred as of recent patches, but I mean, most of the time it does damage. So yeah, that's all for this showcase. Um, I'm Will Plash 141, and I hope y'all enjoyed.